Why should we shelter in? A computer simulation. Hi, this is Dr. George Yang. I'm a double board certified specialist in ear, nose, and throat, head and neck surgery, and facial plastic surgery based in New York City. In this coronavirus pandemic, the help that people need is existential. I will do my best with deciphering information which will help better explain what the experts mean by flattening the curve and why sheltering in place will help to do that. The most visual demonstration of what has happened in other countries and what will happen here in the United States is from the Washington Post article entitled, Why Outbreaks Like Coronavirus Spread Exponentially and How to Flatten the Curve by Harry Stevens on March 14th, 2020. I'll post the link uh, in the description below. In this article, there are four computer simulations of an outbreak showing how quickly it spreads over time without any social distancing or sheltering in, as well as 75% adopting social distancing versus 88% adopting social distancing. Along the top of the simulation is a graph which shows how many people are healthy, sick, and recovered. It strongly demonstrates the difference between doing nothing versus having one in four people move around versus one in eight people move around can uh, make a flattening of the curve. So here's, uh, here's the first graph. So what they're showing is a town of 200 people and there's only one person sick in the town and everyone's moving at random and they'll show how quickly uh, it can spread. So if you look at the top graph here, change over time, this is the entire graph where eventually everyone recovers but the curve is very high. So we're gonna run this simulation and take a quick look at it. I may speed it up for the sake of time. So here we go, you can see 100 people are sick, they're healthy, the first one just recovered, uh, the peak is very high, nearly all 180, uh, 88 were at the peak, and then eventually everyone recovered. So the, the curve here is very tall and high, and it looks like almost everyone got sick at the same time, even though only one person was sick initially. So if we don't do anything and we don't try to shelter in or uh, do any social distancing, very quickly everyone could have it and then this could overwhelm the healthcare system. In the second graph, uh, they're trying to show how uh, they did it in China where there was a forced quarantine, which is a wall. And uh, that helped to slow the, the uh, the spread, so it definitely flattened the graph initially until uh, they opened up the walls and then it uh, started spreading more widely. So here we go, let's take, run the simulation. So initially there's a single person, um, they quarantined, but everyone was allowed to move around inside the quarantine, so that limited the number of people um, uh, getting sick on the outside um, and then allowed some recovery, at least with the initial uh, quarantine population. Um, so with the recovered patients, that helps create some uh, slowing of the spreading of the virus. So that seems okay. It's better than the, the first one. Um, if there's only a limited number of hospital beds or ventilators for the sickest of patients, that, that may be just enough to keep as many people alive as possible. But if uh, the, the more people that get sick, it may, there may not be enough resources for everyone and then people will die. In this one they say um, they allow uh, three quarters of the population to not move. Uh, in this case they call it social distancing, but it looks more like it's sheltering in. And, uh, and not allowing them to move around. So that might be like they're staying home and then one, one or two, one out of four people are allowed to move around. So here we go. So in the end, if we look at the total graph, it's definitely much more flattened uh, at the end of the time uh, of the graph. 113 people recovered, um, 62 uh, people never got the disease and there were still 25 people sick which would give, which would be uh, enough for the hospital and 
uh, to take care of those 25 sick people, but let's run the simulation. So notice there was only one person sick initially. Uh, three quarters of the dots are not moving, and only w one quarter of the dots, or 25% of the dots, are moving. So notice of the people who are getting sick, a lot of the ones getting sick are actually the ones that are uh, uh, not moving. So potentially if they caught it, they would, they, because they're not moving around, they wouldn't spread it. Only the people that uh, are moving would spread it. Uh, and that definitely slowed things down. Uh, and you can see there's a gap where even in, in this case, some people did not even get sick, 47 out of 200. So let's look at the third case, in the, or the fourth case. In the fourth case, uh, they only let one of every eight people move around. So let's, you can see in this one, uh, this was the best one. Uh, you, if you could, if it's possible to be even more aggressive than this, that would be even better. But notice, out of 200 people, 150 never got the disease, 44 recovered. Uh, so they, uh, and then only uh, six six people got sick. Uh, or at least at the end of the at the end of the graph, but let's uh, let's let it run. Uh, you know, just looking at it, 44 recovered, meaning there were 40 like a total of 50 people that did get sick. So let's rerun this simulation. So one person is sick. There's much fewer people moving around. Um, that one person that's moving around uh, is getting people sick. Now, uh, essentially. The only way for the virus to spread is if one, the one person out of eight uh, continues to move around, at least in this scenario. I think realistically, once that person gets sick and starts developing symptoms, they won't continue to move around as in this simulation. They would then self-quarantine and not move. So perhaps it could be even better. Uh, than the graph, but we will, you know, these are simulations and it's not uh, perfect. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully it gives you a sense of, you know, what could be. Um, at this point, we're behind the curve in that not enough of us were, uh, were quarantining. In this case, there's only one person sick out of 200, and the quarantine prevented almost uh, three quarters of the people from getting sick. Um, in our case, it's probably spread to many, many people already. Uh, we just don't know it yet. And then if we start uh, sheltering in now, sheltering in place, perhaps we can flatten the curve. And, and that's what the, uh, the Surgeon General means, what the President means, and what uh, all of our, uh, uh, you know, government officials like uh, uh, Cuomo and de Blasio are talking about. Um, whether this will turn into martial law and they will uh, force everyone to, you know, be at home and then perhaps, you know, have, uh, have people checking, you know, and asking, you know, why, why are you walking around? Is there a good reason? Um, are you going to go home right after? In a separate video, I will explain how flattening the curve will help in relation to our healthcare system. Delaying the number of people getting sick will buy time for more testing, personal protective equipment for healthcare workers, for more people to recover and perhaps create a herd immunity and the development of vaccines. If you found this video helpful, like and subscribe for future videos. This is Dr. George Yang signing off. See you on the next video.